life is changing fast. We are experiencing whole new perspectives and choices. Psychic mediums Sharon Pugh and Matthew Brandau bring you insight to historical times, current events, and the very real future that we face. Sharon and Matthew are true tested and certified psychic mediums and life coaches. They give you straight insight with a caring, humorous touch. Join them every Thursday for a new exciting topic and call into the show for a free reading with both hosts. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Thursday and welcome to Psychic Mediumship and Beyond with Sharon Pugh and Matthew Brandau. Um, Matt, you wanted to make an announcement. I, You just told yeah. me what it was and Kind of um, folks, uh, uh, we're, we want to let you know that uh, not only are we radio show hosts, but we are also just regular people as well. And we wanted to send our, our hopes and our wishes uh, to a tragic event that is apparently taken or taking place right now in Maryland. There has been another, according to the news, another shooting. Um, and this is... Uh, it's really unfortunate that uh, this is an ongoing issue and it's not being uh, severely uh, uh, stopped in any particular way by the government. It seems like it's more important to keep it in politics than it is to actually have a resolution. So we wanted to have, well, I wanted to let everybody know that our hearts go out to the victims and the victims' families, and we uh, pray to God that. Uh, very few people have been hurt, and we know that many people's lives will have been changed by this, and we can only pray that they will uh, all be okay and our our hearts go out to them. So that's what I wanted to say. Okay. You know, oddly enough, I, I live in Atlanta, but, you know, Matt, you know, my husband's in Maryland. You know, he's flying mm -hmm. out of Maryland uh, today. So I'm I'm hoping that this didn't occur anywhere where he is. And um, so I'm just going to. This was in a school. From what I understand, it was uh, okay. another school shooting, unfortunately, which is even worse because that means our uh, our precious children uh, are becoming a uh, now a headline in the news on a monthly or less or or more often basis of uh, tragic events, and it's. Um, but I don't. I think your husband is uh, probably safe, and I probably think he's looking at the news himself, going, "Oh boy, here we go again." But right. on that note, Sharon, um, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, we are here to take calls. We're going to be talking about a very interesting subject today, and this subject is going to be based upon our personal uh, experiences through dreams and and visions of insight and uh, what the future may come to be from uh, what the uh, what all kinds of things that are that was the worst English I've ever said in a long time from what things we have seen that are transpiring in many of the positive areas of uh, the world and what's going on right now believe it or not there is some positive things going on but Sharon why don't you tell people what it's about so that uh, I don't sit here you know, taking up the airwaves the whole time Okay, um, you know, first let's get this out of the way. If you want to book a reading with me, uh, go to psychicreadingsnow.com and look for the green button. Click on that. Um, I also have auto dial. You can, you know, go to my website, press the button, it automatically dials my phone. But I have a green button. Click on there. You can get an instant reading right now. And not at this moment. Well, not I'm right now. <laughs> I, and I'm on radio, so don't do it now because I'm not there. Um, but psychicreadingsnow.com. I like that website, Night. Psychic Readings Now. It's so easily easy to remember. It's so awesome. Um, and the same goes for me. Uh, you can reach the same. You can reach me in a few different website names: Psychic Matthew, Psychic .red, which is the same thing as what YouTube is using now for their paid 
uh, website. It's youtube.red, so I decided to see if that was available, and it was. So now you, you can reach me through psychic.red, psychicmatthew.com, and mediummatthew.com, as well as a few others. But for now, that's enough. Um, and the same rules apply if you want to give me a call either way. Just click on my telephone number, and we can set up a, uh, a, a prepaid reading for 15, half an hour, 40, an hour long. And also, when the uh, small button shows on the on the link shows green, which right now it shows yellow, then uh, you can give me a call when it shows green, and we can go for a pay per minute. Um, but today is going to be something of a very fascinating show. And Sharon, before we even start that, let's let's do the the old triad of uh, the telephone number. Okay. All right. You would ask me that. It's two oh two. But I know it. You know. Do you uh, well, know well, it? I'm. I, I, just say okay. the damn number. Two oh two. Well, hush. Shut up and let me say it. It's two. <laughs> It's two zero two five seven zero seven zero five seven two zero two five seven zero seven zero five seven. So give us a call, get a free reading with both of us, and as soon as you call in, uh, we will be notified, and then we'll take your call. But today, this is really fascinating. What what is our planet? What is our life going to be like? in 100 years, 200 years, what is it, you know, what is it doing in um, 50 years? And Matthew, it sounds like you've got wind on your microphone. Can you move your, your mic away a little bit? You sure about that? <laughs> yes, I'm positive. Okay, I got my eardrums. Okay. Hi, see why I do radio with him? He's a He's a clown. Okay. Pain in the butt All right. is more like but, it. Yeah, no, that's much better. So whatever you do, I keep, keep doing that. But no, okay. Yes, dear. Architecture, architecture, travel, uh, mindset, religious beliefs, technology, communication. What, you know, what are we going to be living like, our, our existence in, you know, 50 years, you know, not much change, 100 years, 200 years, big changes. So we're going to throw kind of a lot of stuff at you um, because we, me and Matthew were picking up different things. But wanted to start with travel, you know, because travel is a big, important thing to us, being able to get from point A to point B you know, quickly, easily, and and safely. You know, one of the obvious things, duh, doesn't take a science, you know, psychic to, you know, to guess this one, but, you know, self-driving cars. We're actually going to have more self-driving cars than us driving. And, you know, they're saying that it's going to be a lot safer. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think that, that it's going to be safer. I think that there's going to be a lot of, you know, glitches in this. But we want to talk about how we're going to travel, you know, with aircraft and ways that a lot of us are going to get on this contraption and travel overseas or travel across the country, you know, really quickly and more efficiently. And mm -hmm. one thing, and again, this is all done through meditation, dreams, astral travel, airplanes. You know, we all go to the airport and get on the tram, and then we, you know, go to the gate, and we wait, and we line up and go through security. And, you know, in a hundred, hundred and fifty years, what what we're going to have is we're going to have these massive, massive buildings that we we go in. And there's going to be about a hundred times more aircraft that are gonna be flying out at the same time. So think of a okay, think of an aircraft that it, it has wings, but the wings project slide out of the side. 
we don't get on a ramp at a gate and you know line up we actually ride an escalator up through the belly of the plane and keep in mind this aircraft is inside of a building and we get on through the belly of the plane escalator up get in our seats and a door up at the top opens the aircraft lifts up and the the navy the air air force they already have planes air you know i don't know what what they're called but they're military planes that lift up and then go but we're actually going to use that concept for travel so we're we're the aircraft is going to lift at different heights so instead of having runways we're going to have air space air lanes that each aircraft has and it's just going to be more proficient it's going to end up costing less to fly this is going to be something that people do on a daily basis they get on these things and they go to work so it's not just to travel it's to go you know to go to your job you get back on and you come home how cool Mm -hmm. is that well it's it from from your perspective and from what you talked about, that's fantastic. But I'm I'm also going to take this another step further. And what I see from the technology, which I agree with you on what you're talking about, I do see that we are going to be in a runway less airport system that is going to be constructed within the next hundred years. And the reason why I say a hundred to two hundred years is because most of these things take one, one, two, sometimes even three generations before these things are actually brought into a reality that is tested and there's a financial gain to be made. But one of the things that's going to be changed significantly in from what I've seen is that we are no longer going to be dealing with these jets, and I mean jet engines. They're going to be gone. Um, We are going to be working with a a new type of energetic system, which does not require jet fuel, gasoline, those types of things, and oil will be no longer necessary. These types of items will not need to be uh, available, including, and this is a really big one, Sharon. You know that they take, they they create oil for edible for food now somebody told me and I don't know if this is true but they said that they take the oil from uh, from the earth and they do create something which is then considered to be edible oil have you ever heard of anything like that mm, no huh I mean okay there might be a confusion wh- on my part maybe might be I don't know but anyways the food that we're gonna have is going to be extremely healthy those things like Monsanto's that, that they make these uh, genetically GMOs, gone. It won't be needed. We will be growing very healthy food that can be grown all over the planet. Um, and all these things going. But let me, I'm, I'm kind of diverting off of it. The point is, is that transportation will evolve to such a thing that you're talking about is correct, but instead of it being uh, even propellered, uh, prop, um, propelled, it will actually be magnetics and anti-gravity, which is no longer a mysterious science. It's actually now proven that it does exist. It's just not in mainstream. But people, they will be able to use it for very, very large aircraft. And I told you about this, Sharon. Do you remember I told you about that aircraft and how big it was? I did. It was like a bus. It was... Well, you're right. But imagine a bus has two, two sides, a left and a right. When you're standing up from the driver's seat and looking backwards, you got two or three seats on the left, two or three seats on the right. Now imagine that going five bus lengths back and ten bus lengths out to the side and it's all seats and there's a lot of room and there's no tires and the way to get in is not through the side of the bus but the front of it is opened up and the top of it is opened up so people can sit in there and they can enjoy fresh air 
and what whatnot. And then when it's time, it actually rises up off the ground to a certain level, maybe five or ten feet, maybe a hundred feet, whatever they want. The top closes down and it's all glass, but it's tinted so that it's uh, it's comfortable for the eyes. And they just start moving forward and fly off to wherever the destination is. And while you're on this transportation, just like in airplanes, as they come down the aisle and they ask people what they would like, that's no longer going to be available. Why? Because now you'll have a computer pad in front of you that you can press on what you want when you want it. And people will bring it to you. That's how big these things will be. It's like being in a restaurant, flying. So that's what my vision of the future is that I see us. And I consider this to be a type of utopia. Now, you were talking about something round. Tell them about the round thing and the infrastructure. Ah, okay. Yeah, we, you know, this was kind of a weird coincidence because we were, you talking, me and you were talking about what we see the, the way that we're going, you know, to be living, you know, families, homes, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, uh, by, by 20, around 2200, you know, like 90% of us will live in concrete urban communities, but we're not talking about rectangle, you know, or triangle shape houses and we both I just had a dream maybe four nights ago of this I was carrying this briefcase and I was I was a rep for um, architecture and it had all of this equipment in it and in my briefcase was this scaled down image of this house and it was round you know at the top and it had multi you know multi levels going up and down and it, it was raised you know raised off the ground and mm -hmm. you at the same time you were saying that you were saying that houses were going to be round so i'm like okay there has to be something to that yeah i agree i uh, i think what's going to be ha oh we're coming up to our break we're going to come right back and continue on with where we left off folks once again when you when you want to give us a call Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you Tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Hi, this is recording artist and composer Yuval Ran inviting you to a voyage through the chakras, a new double album of guided meditations to transform your life, a sublime musical medicine for nourishing inner peace and reaching to your higher virtues. Get it now at metamindfulnessmusic.com, M-E-T-T-A, mindfulnessmusic.com. My name is Veera Batra, and this is How I Live United. Many families have come to America for a better life. 
I advocate for these families with United Way. United Way empowers them to see opportunities available. We help them get involved with their kids' schools and network within the community. My name is Meera Batra. I help families see opportunity and succeed. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Okay, all right. I think we are back. That was a little bit early. Um, okay, Matt. <laughs> okay, um, before we continue on, with, oh, go ahead. No, just um, before we before we left off, because you know my mediumistic mind can get scattered. Um, you mm-hmm. were finishing up about, and I and I kind of wanted you to give the insight as to why the houses are round. Okay. Um, there's there's two points to this, what's coming up for our future in this particular thing. And number one is that the, the houses are round because we seem to discover that there is a symbiotic relationship between the energy of our planet, of the space that we are in within our solar system, and with our domiciles. And being square, we somehow block energy. We create a less efficient um, lifestyle. And I can't put it another way because I don't know. But in the round houses that we design, um, there is a change in mentality there's a change in health, there is a change in comfort zones, and it also, for some reason, changes the ability on where we can build. Um, And I don't know why that is. I really don't, but I'm sure we'll find out in the future. But we can then go much higher. And my guess is that the higher we go, because it's round, we are not as impacted by any kind of extreme weather like strong winds because it flows around us in an aerodynamic way. So that seems to be a futuristic theme is that we become more earth aware in how we live with the earth. So it's much, much more friendly and the earth begins to heal itself because we live a lifestyle which condones living symbiotically with what gives us life. Um, And at the same time, our energy sources, which we use on a daily basis within these structures, is also Earth-friendly. We don't have as much of a demand for intense energy use because in the future we are also very streamlined and very technologically advanced where any energy we use doesn't require a whole lot to run all of the same things that we use today and therefore we don't drain the planet so quickly and cause possible issues to it. We are much more aware of it. And the larger corporations that at one time were ruling the planet via control of energy are no longer in existence. They are, in, if, if you will, they become the criminals. And the rest of society says, don't let those people produce anything that requires fossil fuel or um, other t- uh, nuclear you know, it, 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 we know that it's useful, but we also know that it's extraordinarily unsafe where the future energy for our domiciles, for these round, very earth-friendly, very responsible lifestyle, uh, that these energy sources coincide with this and they're very symbiotic. And we are able to maintain main homeostasis within the house just like we do with our own bodies. We, the system knows how to make us comfortable. It knows how to keep the airflow for certain people cooler and for other people warmer. It's highly intelligent housing with intelligent energy sources. How does that sound? Yeah, you know, and they're all, they're also, I think, going to be smaller in, you know, in size. You know, the trend now is the tiny houses. You know, there's a show about you know, people buying tiny houses. And I, you know, I was really, I was meditating on this and 
you know, through my automatic writing, I, I wrote 20, the year 2120, you know, three out of five people will be divorced or single. That's hmm. a lot. The marriage yeah. rate will go down. You know, more and more people will choose not to get married, you know, not to have children. And, yeah, but I also saw that the AI, our artificial intelligence coming in to play with this, you know, because we have, we'll have the option by 2120, we'll have the option to have artificial intelligence as a companion, you know, not only as a, a human symbolic companion, but we'll have AI pets, you know, that, that don't shed, we don't need to feed. And, you know, it was just, it was like overwhelmingly sad to me because three, three out of five, you know, people, that's, that's a lot. And, hmm. um, you know, but if I, you're saying I, that the AI is there, wouldn't that, would, wouldn't that also help to manage, you know, saying, Hey, we need more babies and we need to, you know, like say once for one decade, no babies are next needed in the next decade. They, okay. We need approximately 500,000 babies to be born and people are, you know, encouraged through whatever means to have them. Would that also be possible? You know, I can see, I can see that because I did, you know, I did a radio show, it was like nine years ago, and I predicted that the birth rate was going to go down. And lo and behold, the birth rate is going down. And it's only going yeah, to get more, and more and more are, are choosing not to, you know, not to have children, but the population is still going to go up. I mean, we're looking at possibly 12 billion on the planet. In the next hundred years, and well, no, that's that's a contradiction right there. I know it's a contradiction. I know I know it is, but I, you know this could be you know people in certain countries just absolutely have no children, while others in other continents ah, have okay. you know more children. I was seeing the U.S. Ah, you know, okay, so, okay. Now, now we have clarity. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I knew, I knew you were gonna say that's a contradiction, but we, we really, we really do, you know, simplify our life. You know, the way that we dress. You know, being fashionable is out of fashion. You know, at yeah, some yeah. Point, at, at some point. We're not going to be wearing stilettos or high heels or, or shoes that hurt our feet or you know, we're going to be streamlining more toward easy, easy on, you know, clothes, very, um, very kind of muted colors. And we're going to get away from, you know, fashion designers. And I think we're also going to get away from something also as well, which I, I like you bringing up your point. I think we're going to get away from very hard, intense labor. I think that that's going to be something that will be removed because of our intelligence. I just see it being, you know, it's like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing road construction. Okay, well, we don't need as much anymore. You don't have to be out in the sun sweating like crazy, hoping you don't have to go to the hospital. I think people are going to be healthier and they're going to, it's going to be life is going to be a little less physically demanding, but we'll still be in very good shape. That's a really good point you just brought up. Well, you know, it, it, I think what you're seeing kind of goes back to the artificial intelligence that we have machines to do the hard labor. We have, you know, robots to, um, you know, and self-driving construction machines to do the roads and the bridges. And, um, you know, so my, my personal fear is, okay, all these people that have these skills that do this for a living, when they get moved out of this, what do they do? Do they go back to school to learn how to work with these, you know, these machines? So I think we'll work in it in a whole different way, but I do see it being – Better. I, I think that we're going to come to a, a time where we work less and we enjoy life more. There's going to be a movement of, you know, learning how to live 
and you know equally divide your hmm. work and your personal life because we don't know how to do that now. Okay, so just a quick refresher here on this one. Uh, folks, if you're interested in giving us a call, you can give us a call and we'll give you a free reading at the number of 202-570-7057. Again, that's 202-570-7057. And we will give you a psychic reading if you have a question. And uh, otherwise, we hope you're enjoying the show. I'm also going to invite people to, uh, at near the end of the show, we're going to be giving out a website in which you can go to to email us questions so that we can read the answer over the air. And if you have ideas or topics that you'd like us to discuss, we will definitely look at those as well. And when the, I can actually give you the email for that right now, which is and it's going to this is the funny part about this email is it's going to be anything you want. You can write your first name, you can write anything you want. You can even say this is for Sharon at vip uh, psychics.vip. And that's actually the web you can say this is for Matthew at psychics.vip. Okay, you can, and it all has to be one word. You can't make it a sentence. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. That's, yeah, that's very cool, you know, because, you know, we do want you, you know, to, to listen to these shows and, you know, come away with questions, you know, because it, it means that you're listening, you're paying attention, and you're taking something away and you want to you want to learn more. So, like I said in the very beginning, we're kind of gonna, gonna, going to ping pong you know, some different things that we see for, you know, for the future and um, something fun, you know, that I, I think will, that we'll have by the year 2050, which is not that far away, are 4D um, escape programs. And because we're going to be, living, you know, we're going to be living further into cities and we're going to be further away from, you know, vacation places. You know, the there's going to be areas in Florida that are going to be underwater in, in a couple hundred years. So we... Or less. Want, what, what, uh, yeah, yeah. So when we want to escape, I'm, I was seeing these you know, feel, smell, see your experience. So if you want to go, if you want to go skiing, you know, it's, it's almost like a virtual reality, but you have the, you have the sensory on your skis that you're truly on snow and that you're going downhill, you're going around a corner and you, and it, it feels, looks, smells like you're really there. And I, I, I see programs where if it's not snow skiing, it's, it's the beach, you know, and it's a way to, you know, we use them to kind of wind down, you know, alleviate stress. And, um, and, and I, before the show is over, I want to touch on something that I see being done to eliminate any kind of mental disorders, you know, fixing brain injury, paralysis. Um, so I definitely want to touch on that. But I feel like you have something you want to talk about, Matt. Well, you're right, as usual. Um, you were talking about that. And I think there's a movie that was starred Bruce Willis where you lay in your home and you use a, uh, an ex you use a connection to a, a a, a body, a, a robot body, and uh, yeah, it was an action movie, and it was there was a big problem, and bad guys and good guys, and in the end, Bruce Willis saves the day. But uh, the idea of what you talked about is right there. But in fourth dimension, that sounds very attainable. But the thing is, is we have to have the consciousness to be able to handle a fourth dimension, because right now most people have a hard time accepting three dimensions. And we are on a plan that is three-dimensional, but we are tr we as a human species are capable of visualizing in common but 
unusual moment, I should say, of four dimensions. So you're absolutely right, Sharon. I think that that's something that's going to be coming up that we'll be able to grasp and touch, and uh, it'll be quite amazing. Um, the other thing that you also brought up is the ability for people to be getting along, and that's on based, in my opinion, also on fate. And in the future, these battles that uh, are being waged by um, radicals that feel that if you are not with them, then you need to be removed. They will be, uh, they will be methodically pushed away, and they're, it's almost like they'll be given themselves, they'll be given a whole other place to live, and they can dominate that one place, and that's it. And the rest of us will live in a euphoric society that accepts all faiths and respects everything about them. And the laws that they have, they keep and they apply it in their area. If they come over into another faith's area, they recognize that faith and they uh, don't try to integrate by force. Okay, so we, you know, we consciously separate ourselves or we are, um, so say somebody, a group of people are more spiritual than they are devout religious. Say they're they're not Catholic or Protestant or Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, but they're spiritual. So you'll have a community of spiritualists and mm -hmm. maybe next you know, next door there's devout devout Catholics. And it's Correct. not that we're segregating them, it's we tend to start moving and living toward like-minded like-minded people. Exactly. Okay. We move to where we want to be and if other people come into our come into our area and they are from another faith and they show that faith that's fine but they can't tell us what to do. They won't try to influence in a negative way to become that. But we'll be right uh, back folks. The Real Conscious Connection, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. Hi, this is New Age Grammy winner Paul Avgerinos. Thanks for listening to Ohm Times Radio, and please support my peaceful healing music with a purchase at iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you shop for fine music. Just put my name into the search engine. Paul Avgerinos. A, V like Victor, G like George, E, R, I, N, O, S. You can also visit me at roundskymusic.com. Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you the brightest of blessings. from Michigan. 
I work an extra part-time job serving lunch at my child's school, but I still can't afford to put food on our table. Daniel from California. Choosing whether to pay the rent or pay to fix the car to get to work doesn't leave us with much at all. Now we can't even pay for meals. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. All right, everybody. Welcome back. And um, we are, we're talking about what, you know, what we're going to be like, what life is going to be like, you know, 50, 100, 200 years from now. And, um, you know, one thing that, you know, we, we didn't make this crap up. Um, I mean, we really <laughs> took. <laughs> That's took... a heck of a way to say it. <laughs> I know. We, no, we didn't. We took... what did you call it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. Thanks for calling me that word. <laughs> <laughs> we did. No, we didn't. I mean, that's why I'm, I'm so, I'm oh so, we're so God. passionate about every show that we do. But no, these, this is years of astro projecting, years of um, meditating and receiving messages and, and images. And um, I mean, I'm from the South, you know, I'm known as a Southern style medium. I tell it like it is. So, I mean, that, that's just me. You know me. Um, Crap, yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> But, um, you know, I can't believe you said that. That's funny. One, oh, one you know, the, the human, you know, the human brain, because me and you both work with people that suffer, you know, from depression and anxiety. And, you know, we do get some people that have mental disorders and it's like, uh, you know, can't help you. You know, we, you need to get another kind of help. But. Um, one thing that I have seen over and over again, and I'm being told, you know, by spirit is that in the next hundred years, you know, the human brain will be unlocked. There will be some sort of computer system program that is going to be made to actually map the whole entire brain and unlock all, you know, the, because there's, there's, there's like a small percentage of the brain that we understand. And there's going to be programs that are hooked up to the brain that override and will alter parts of the brain that do control depression and Alzheimer's and brain injuries and heal it. So instead of, you know, going to your doctor and them, you know, wanting you to try, you know, Sarah Sarah reuptake inhibitors, you know, that raise the serotonin, you know, the dopamine, they're going to be able to hook you up to a, you know, to a computer that pinpoints the part of the brain that is causing the depression and, and fix it. So, and so what you're saying is we'd have medic medication that is, uh, specific for the location of treatment, and it's not an overall treatment to the body, but it specifically goes after one area. It goes after one area of the brain, you know, because, you know, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, um, M MS, mm -hmm. I, I think stems from the brain, you know, in the central nervous system. But, you know, that's going to take a lot of power away from the pharmaceutical companies and we all know that the pharmaceutical companies are like gods you know they control, oh yes yes you yes, know, yes. It, and it's going to take you know a lot of that power away from them so this utopia world that we're seeing in the future there's a huge part of that is because we are going to be able to have these you know these inventions these machines and computers that automatically treat our, our our depression and if we if we don't suffer then we are going to be happier we are going to we are going to be able to you know so what you're also saying is it could be preemptive it could be preemptive and yeah actually have an impact on the birthing and the babies and making sure that their dna is a particular 
uh, a particular setup so that we know that when they get older, uh, they will not have to suffer from these diseases such as heart, heart disease or other types of diseases which are common in elderly people where any type of major organ failure is imminent at, at from the point of 90 to 95 years old is when it starts to become imminent and then after 100, 100 it's just a matter of waiting. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and it's, you know, it's also going to allow us to, um, okay, that wasn't supposed to happen, my phone ringing, um, but it's also going to allow us to live a lot longer, you know, to 150 years, because we are able to eradicate things that break down the brain, and you know, and then I see that spreading to different areas of the body. Cancer will be eradicated. Cancer will be no more. And, you know, unless you are so old that your immune system can't work at all, you we are going to live a lot longer. Hence, kind of going back to, you know, the, the 12 billion, you know, population that, that I got. Well, I'm going to tell you something interesting that's a little bit off topic, but at the same time, it's right on topic, and you'll see what I'm saying. I was once recently working at a uh, cancer research lab, and they now know where cancer comes from, exactly where it comes from. Uh, but they don't know how it morphs into the different styles, but they do know how it comes from, and it actually comes from the enzymes at the DNA le level. Apparently, there's some enzymes. That, uh, there's a, usually a two to three percent of the DNA that the uh, uh, the scientific world cannot identify. Now, on the other side, they say that that's probably an alien type DNA. They don't know. They just don't know what it is, so they label it a junk DNA. But from what they told me at this place is that we actually have DNA, which what will happen at some point in life is uh, it will actually come the DNA starts to make mistakes and starts to do something it shouldn't do, and that's where the cancer starts. But it is so hard to spot where that cancer is going to start in the cellular level at the DNA level because not everybody has the same DNA. So not everybody's going to catch the cancer. Just a, just a fascinating side thought. Um, you know, that that is fascinating. I mean, so it, it – uh, you. I don't want to I don't want to take it too far, but you know things. I, I like, was just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no, me, me, me. I was actually going to elaborate on that, but it's like, no, then we would, you know, be another five, you know, five ten minutes. But no, that uh, makes okay. absolute. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. So. So, um, what, yeah, that's. Go ahead. I, I just I, I think it's great to, that we're fighting for airspace. I, I really do. I, I think it's great. I know. It's like, uh, but 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 um, yeah. <laughs> no no. I actually I actually want to give you this airtime because you had um, told me something about a a payment plan in the future. How we are going to be paying? Oh, um, I, the fiat. Yeah. We are actually going to remove all currencies all of them every single country will be removed as far as their currency goes from all the first world to the third world countries we are going to be based on a system which is computerized so will it be bitcoin it will be bitcoin yes but it will not be bitcoin itself it'll be a another system that is developed as if bitcoin is the baby and then we build off of that into something huge. And I don't know how it exactly will be, but for some reason I see people wearing a glove. And the glove has all kinds of things on it. You can buy things with it. You can make phone calls with the glove. It's like having a smartphone that's attached to your hand, but it's not. It's no longer uh, something that you charge. But in a place you wear it in your hand, and it works instantly, and there's no battery to worry about, and there's no health risks. So you talk to people and you pay for things through this glove and you know how much money you have made. And people, depending on what they do, they will have more credit in their name, but it is not unfair. 
you know, nobody is allowed to become a multi-billionaire anymore. Nobody. No matter how good you are, you cannot manipulate the system. You cannot be allowed to become too rich. You can live a life of luxury, but there is no reason in the future for for one person to be a hundred and two hundred or three hundred dollar billionaire and then that's for the one percent and the rest of them live lower. That will not be allowed because nobody that rich nobody needs to be that rich. It's not necessary. So the money gets returned to keep balance. And it is going to be watched very closely by the computer systems to make sure it, re it remains fair. Is that what you're talking about, Sharon? Yeah, I mean, which I have, I found, you know, find fascinating. And this is something that I asked you: is is this going to be part of the bartering society where we don't have we don't have banks? You know, we. Um, no, the, the banks are gone. Okay, and that's They're where the digital gone. currency come you know comes in so we end right. up being in control of our own income so we we get away from working for large companies and we end we t we end up being responsible for the amount of money that we make based on what we do oh absolutely and greed greed is so anti fair in the future, P the computer systems and the people, uh, because of their level of awareness, they won't allow people to be greedy. If you become greedy, you get sent off someplace <laughs> until you learn to stop doing that. Yeah, you brought you brought that up earlier, and I again, you know, what came to mind was, you know, a banish island, or you get you get banished. You know, there's no you don't go through the court systems. You just you get picked up. And you get delivered, you know, somewhere else. So I think we're going to have right. less – we're going to have less tolerance for any kind of crime. And no more guns. None. Ah, okay. Police, can't, police cannot even have lethal, uh, lethal weapons on them. They can only have controlling, like, electronic sticks, very painful ones, you know, but – there's no more killing of anybody. It's not allowed. Okay, so do, you know, say somebody does commit a crime, I mean, do we implant a chip of some sort that is controlled, where they are controlled, so if they It's commit more like a, a behavioral um, system. They committed the crime. Why did they commit the crime? It's not what they did and get punished for it. It's why did they do it, go in and t figure out and try to help them understand where they came from. Not many people know about this, but it's called neuropsychology. And what it is is it talks about how they learned what they need to do, why they need to do this. And if they are mentally that disturbed, then we give them a setting where they can be very safe. And if they're not and from that setting, we can then give them a chance to do something in another area, but we support them to figure out what it is they need to be. So if they continue to do that, then they deal with it. And if we have a rare situation where somebody is really, really bad, then we let them live alone. And uh, you know, we are not limited to the earth as well. There's no limitations whatsoever. It's, so people have to realize that the concept of law enforcement and that type of thing is completely different in theory and in practical application. Very, very different. Mm, okay. That's, you know, I think every, you know, everything that we've touched on is, you know, fascinating. And I want to throw one more thing out there that, um, you know, that I saw is mm. oh, that yeah, you're right. we one are, at a time. you know, we are going to get away from um, going to, you know, the doctor, the hospital, I think we're going to have, you know, access through video monitor or um, diagnostics, that we're going to have home diagnostics. And Oh, I think you're right. I absolutely I agree with you 100%. I think it's going to be a much more beautiful thing. You can give yourself your own physical. Y yeah, and then only if you need you know, something that's urgent that you've got to have taken care of, you do go somewhere else that I think that we're going to have access to, 
you know, equipment that is, you know, currently in hospitals and, and doctor's offices where we, we, we hold more power over our health. And yeah, it's like stick your finger into a, into a hole, it takes a little bit of blood, and you get a green light saying you're healthy for today. You don't need anything. And then maybe a week later you stick it in and you get a little yellow light says, you know, we need to assess you. So they take a little bit more blood and they say whether or not you need to see a doctor or whatever, it assesses you. It's like, okay. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, so that that was the last thing that I wanted to throw out there that, um, you know, that I saw for the next 50, 100, 200 years, and that's as far as I went. I couldn't see beyond 200 years. I don't know why, but well, I don't if you went beyond that, gonna... well, you may not come back. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, now, the but... one thing I want people to know about is that we do have this website. If they have any questions, they can send us an, an email, and we might be able to answer it on the air. It's psychics, with an S at the end, dot VIP, psychics dot VIP. And we have a website, and they can type in a question and send it to us. All right. So and let people know about that. All right. And if you want to get a hold of me again, go to psychicreadingsnow.com and check and see if my button is green. Matthew, real quick. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. They, they, we're fine. Okay. All right, <laughs> lot, everybody. Folks. Thank you. We'll good, see you good next week. Good seeing everybody. Thank you so much. Take care now. Bye.